whatever things are true. Whatsoever things are happening in your hearts is such a great thing. See, I could tell it by the cleansing of the atmosphere, by the way that I feel within my, within my being, by God's grace. Oh, praise the Lord forevermore. Amen. You may go down and prepare for the morning offering. Lord, we give thee the honor and the praise and the glory for all that thou hast done with our hearts and lives this day. We thank thee for the privilege of being in this body of believers. We thank thee for the forbearance, and kindness, and the graciousness and love that's been expressed toward me and toward each fellow believer. We pray, Heavenly Father, that it can be said of us in the days that are coming. The 
we have not married strange wives, but that, Lord, that we have married thee only. But contrary to what people think, God does believe in divorce. And he said through the prophet, if you do not return unto me, I will grant unto you a bill of divorcement. We do not want that paper. We want the love of God, the kingdom of God, to operate forthright. Yes. Let our hearts be cleansed through the precious blood of Jesus, which we now plead and give us strength to obey thee now and forever. Sanctify this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. Could we respond? <laughs> well, you had me weeping, Sally, through the precious. That anointing was like the choir when they sing for the Messiah that night. Whatever that was, that's the way the anointing was right there. What was that they sing? The worthy amen. The worthy amen. That's what the anointing was like on you then. God surely directed you. He said he would direct you over there. And that's exactly what he did. Thank you, Lord. And while I was praying, the music couldn't have been better. It was beautiful. It was perfect. See how God can work with you, and work with myself, and work with all of us here, and give us such a thing on music. See, there's hardly anywhere in Christendom. Now, they're playing classical music in Christendom, but they're playing it by their picking, and it doesn't mean a thing. In fact, it's discouraging people from ever liking good music. A lot of people. And then other people, it's a... It's a it's feeding their, their aesthetic appetites and they're not even in search of the Spirit. They're just, see, it's on the wrong line or the other. But here Jesus is guiding and I'm... <laughs> I saw it.
I was going to tell her, Sally, you have just preached a sermon on your piano. Yes. See, that's great. Yes. See, God's allowed us to have both the hymns and the great classics. Yes, sir. Yes. And we need them to begin to approach to tell his greatness and his majesty. Otherwise, we can't even get in the fringe of it. But he's allowing us in this place to do that. And of course, I very seldom have wept when a number like that was being played, but I wanted to, I wanted to weep. I want to say, oh God, how great you are. Because what I, what I preached was coming through the piano. And he chose it. Said, of course, he chose it. That's why it was so great and so wonderful. Praise the Lord. The announcements before the closing song. Please note, <clears throat> uh, Martha Austin is not in the hospital now. She's at home. That's in the boat. Uh, she's back in the oh, she's back in the hospital. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, she's back in Charleston Memorial. She went back yesterday. Charleston Memorial back yesterday. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, Israel travelers, please turn in at least one hundred dollar deposit by Wednesday night to Sandy Chittum. It can be more, but at least that much to uh, secure the uh, cheaper fare. And also, uh, I wouldn't know this, and I don't know if you would know this, but, you know, we heard the story of Reverend Helm receiving his honorary doctorate. Well, a lot of us write letters to him once in a while. Now, how do you write a letter to him now? Well, it's the Reverend Doctor, Lauren W. Helm, the Reverend Doctor. And you don't have to do that. You don't he, have to. no. You can just write Brother Helm because I heard him respond to somebody. Well, Brother Helm, but our response could be and perhaps should be because the Holy Spirit was in the honoring. We can respond the way you've, on the envelope, right on the inside, Brother Helm, because it'll encourage him and help him if you, if you address him familiarly, Brother Helm. But the, the, the envelope could uh, say that. How's that again, Pastor? It's the Reverend Doctor. Telling you that the story. Reverend Dr. Lauren W. Helm, or if you're writing to he and Mrs. Helman, you want to correct, uh, what do you call that, a formal address? Uh, the Reverend Dr. and Mrs. Lauren W. Helm. That's helpful. All right. Now, and John Sandy's prints are ready. And uh, so... If any of you ordered those, you can contact him. And as well, anyone in junior high, high school, or adult who are interested in taking um, introductory drawing classes uh, one night a week, you can contact John Sandy. He's going to be offering those. Also, youth choir is canceled this afternoon, and the beginning of the new season will be delayed until November the 1st. Youth choir, you're dismissed until November 1st, in other words, okay? Holy Land singers will meet today at 5 o'clock. Great. If we're not all present and prompt, we'll be in kind of a fix. So please hear that this is a crucial meeting for us. It will last 30 minutes. Holy Land singers will meet today at 5 o'clock. And if we're not all present and we're not all prompt, yeah. God might not anoint us in Israel. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yes, John. Uh, I want to praise the Lord, first of all, for helping this morning. And uh, just crying out in my own heart. Well, you said something that helped me because... Um, in my new job and the different things going on in my life, being very busy, I've really been fond of the devil that I've been neglecting God, and I've tried not to do that. It's just been extremely, extremely busy. Yes. Uh, oh, you have. But God's help. So uh, yes, he I know have. that the devil will fight us and get us in a battle. So I, I'm, I really uh, am trusting for God to help me be faithful and be balanced. And it, He's helped me to witness. He's yeah. helped me to. Uh, Share with uh, John uh, Gray. Be a witness, and as I share my artwork with the students, they say, uh, 
do you do a lot of religious work and I get a chance to just acknowledge my salvation right, to God. them and uh, a young lady I, I believe uh, anything God's in there's eternal significance exactly and, it never uh, quits and I, so I've been trusting for God not, me to, not to fail that and I found out that uh, uh, the young lady that I ride with every day is related to the Dawsons, and I didn't know that. Oh. But I'd been sharing with her quite extensively, yes. and I believe it's been significant for whatever reason. Praise the Lord. And she's very dear and uh, very open. And, and I believe it, uh, too. So I want to thank the Lord for helping me. I do, too. For uh, providing yes, uh, for the church's patience with me, with my inconsistencies and my, my uh, needs. You are and, also patient with us. And I ask your forgiveness, Pastor, and anyone else. Uh, for anything I've said and murmuring or complaining yes, I'm not in any aware wrong of way. Uh, I want to be completely clear because everything I do yes. is reflecting on this church and your ministry. True. And I'm very, very true. concerned about that and very sensitive about That's that. And my response wonderful. in every way at work to everybody in such a way that if they would ever know where I went to church, they would want to come. Praise the Lord. So I want to thank the Lord yes, for his John. time. That's great. I uh, wanted to mention just quickly, if it's all right, yes. about these prints. Yes, John. Uh, we went to quite an extensive process to do them, pro almost $500, quite involved. They're very excellent prints, I believe. Uh, there's only 200 available. I just want to mention that there are some left that if you did not order one, I would like to have one because I've been asked already that they are available. And the night class uh, that we'll be starting is for all ages down through junior high. And, and we hope, I'm, what I'm trying to do is offer an opportunity for those students that are in a Christian school all yeah. their lives going up to college and are interested in art to yeah. get some experience because they are interested in art and they go straight into college, they're going to be yes. quite behind. And this is an opportunity to offer them that opportunity and plus adults interested in learning some of the skills and elements yes. of art. Thank you for your Thank you, John. That. Your voice is beautiful. And I am personally unaware of anything you've ever said or done. I am aware that you are hungry for God, that you strive, and that's all I need to know by God's grace. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes. I want to praise the Lord for miracles. Amen. Because there's one sitting beside us. I know it. See, I never dreamed that Debbie would ever, ever be back here. I, and what a pleasant surprise to get a call from her aunt on Thursday. Oh. And that she was able to come by plane to West Virginia. Yes. She'll be here for several weeks, but she just asked me if we knew that she had had the stroke. And had we prayed, and I said... Very much oh, we yes. have prayed. Oh, yes. But I am so thrilled to have my daughter with me this morning <laughs> when I share with Pastor George and Sally. We're glad to have her, Debbie. We're glad to have you here with us today, honey. Praise the Lord. I'll be greeting you after the benediction this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Well, the Lord has blessed us wonderfully. How we got that all in in about two hours, I don't know, but Jesus did it. And uh, I'm, I'm praying... Uh, an unusual thing, and yet it's not so unusual, but I want you to be prepared for it. I'm saying outside the door, you've all heard me in James 2 when he's gathered with us, which is always such a blessing and help to me. Uh, when we're gathered out there, you hear me say sometimes, and increasingly in the last few weeks, Jesus, help me to say what you would be saying. And about several weeks ago, I said that, and God worked with me in such a way, he worked through me and spoke through me in such a way that it's, it's just crucified me. And, and it just left me not able to sleep hardly. And then he reminded me, did you mean it or did you not? And so now I'm aware that it's, it's not what I want to do, but it's what he leads and what he speaks through me. Yes, sir. And then I have to just submit to that by God's grace because I have different ideas about how I'd like to do and where I'd like to go. Suddenly I'm under the, the anointing, the inspiration, and what he's going to say comes right out of me. Now he can, he can trust that heart if that heart loves everybody. And insofar as I have the ability, I love everybody. Jesus helping. I know there's a deeper and fuller love that comes only at the baptism. But insofar as this old heart, and if you, if you can fault me, maybe you can. You can love me and pray for me. I need that very much. I'm reminded that Mary Webster had a pastor once that was unsaved. 
And the, the spiritual committee, quote, spiritual, unquote, got together to get rid of him. And they came to Mary. So she went to the Lord in prayer about it and said, Lord, what should I do about this unspiritual pastor? He doesn't even know the Savior. He doesn't even have a born again experience. Imagine having a United Methodist pastor that's not even been born again. Imagine that. I mean, a John Wesley man. Not in the spirit, but, you know, in the church. It can happen. It can happen. You can have a pastor that's not converted. And the Holy Spirit spoke to her like this. Mary, he is your pastor. I have called him. You love him. And did you know she loved that man and he was converted? 